of Biotechnica. This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. Today's video, I'll be talking about the postdoctoral position in the United States of America. Suppose if you're going to do a postdoctoral position in the United States of America, you might be thinking, is it good in the US? Or if you're doing a postdoctoral position in the Europe, you might be thinking that postdoctoral position in the Europe is good. And when we're going to compare United States of America and the Europe, we need to understand which one is very good in certain criteria. So in this video, I'll be talking about the postdocs in the United States of America versus Europe, which is better and why it is better. So let's talk about the complete topic. First, let's talk about funding opportunity in the United States of America and in the Europe. So if we compare the funding opportunity at the United States of America, we know that most of the fundings uh, for the United States of America postdoctoral position usually comes from research grants and from the employing institution. Suppose if you're talking in case of a university, they used to get fundings from any kind of research grants through NIH or through any of the employing institutions from a universities or from research organizations. They used to be uh, getting it for the postdoctoral position in the United States of America. But when we talk in case of most of the European countries, you will find a lot of government fundings you will be getting. So this is one of the criteria that when we talk in case of postdoctoral positions in the United States of America as well as in Europe, this is the major differences that we talk about funding opportunity. The second important thing is work-life balance. We would be confused that postdoctoral position in the United States of America is better to manage the work-life balance or is it in the Europe? So I'm going to talk about this also. In United States of America, it has a very less work-life balance when you compare it with the Europe. But when you're going to talk in case of different cities in the United States of America, that is also variable. But since we're comparing the United States of America with the Europe, it has a less work-life balance when we compare it with the Europe because Europe has a better work-life policy they do have like they do have uh, paid leaves uh, flexible schedules are actually seen more predominantly in the European countries rather than in the United States of America if anybody is looking about only work-life balance should be your priority then you should always choose going to a Europe even if it's going to be kind of expensive also the next important one is career advancements. We would be wondering that after a postdoctoral position, they should be landing up in either in United States of America or Europe, or they have to come back to India working as a scientist in different research organization. So how is the career advancement if you're going to do a postdoctoral position in the United States of America? In the United States of America, postdoctoral positions are very much directly linked to the career advancements. Yes, after you might have observed many people going for United States of America, for their postdoctoral position usually land up with a job in the United States of America itself. If anybody is looking for that kind of opportunity, I think you can definitely choose United States. But when we compare it uh, with the European countries, so they have a postdoctoral position has very less direct impact on the career advancements. So we used to find a lot of people who are doing their PhD or postdoctoral position in the Europe used to fly to the United States of America or to their native country to carry out their uh, job or any of their their careers that they wanted for but if you see in United States of America after postdoctoral position also they tend to get a lot of job opportunities in the United States of America itself. The fourth important one is going to be research collaborations. Yes, when we talk in case of United States of America and Europe, both have equal uh, weightages of research collaborations. But when we compare it very specifically, USA and Europe, both has. But USA has a little more strong research community because US has more international collaborations when we compare it with the European countries because of the size and funding resources. When we talk in case of US, it's a larger in size and the funding resources are maximum when we compare it with the uh, European countries. So both are equally good but the United States of America a little bit uh, ahead of this research collaborations in the United States of America. The next one is research environment. How is the research environment in the United States of America and in the Europe? Both has an amazing research environment. Uh, US research institutions usually offers a, a bit more flexibility and creativity. Independent research can be carried out so they give you a lot of flexibility and creativity but when we talk in case of a European 
European research institutes, you we used to have a lot of structured research environment. Like suppose let we let us take in case of a Germany. In Germany, they used to have a structured research environment only, which has to be uh, strictly followed. Also, most of the European countries, if you take in for uh, European research institutions, will have this one. But whereas in case of U.S. research institution, it's very flexible, and they ask you for the creativity. Also, they let you do your creativity, which means you have to be kind of more independent uh, rather than depending on your supervisor or principal investigator or anybody else. So these are some of the things that I'm listing for the United States of America and the US. The next important question comes for us is how much is the cost of living when you're choosing between uh, United States of America and the Europe? I'm going to tell you that when we compare it with the United States and Europe, Europe is going to be a little bit higher uh, cost of living when we compare it with the uh, United States of America. Yes, of course, United States of America, the cost of living is a bit more depending upon the type of city you're going to live it might be if you're going to live in washington dc or if you're going to live in chicago or if you're going to live in california so the cost of living might be varying between the cities but when we talk in case of european countries uh, it's less uh, cost of living when we compare it with the European ones. The European cities usually uh, the cost of living is kind of higher than the United States of America. What about the languages? Yes. So both the countries, when we talk in case of both the countries usually speak the primary language, which is going to be English. Uh, when we talk in case of United States of America, they do use English as well as some of the uh, native languages or other languages also. Uh, it can be depending upon the type of field that you're going to be in or depending on the location in the United States of America you're going to live in. So it might be variable also. But in Europe, when we strictly talk about the language, Languages. The primary language for research also or for the communication is always going to be English only. So language is not that much a barrier when we're going to talk in case of Europe as well as when we take in case of uh, United States of America. Healthcare sector is a major concern when we go uh, for the United States of America as well as when we go in for Europe for postdoctoral positions. So United States of America has do both have a very good healthcare sectors, but US usually has a little more expensive healthcare sectors and less accessible when we compare it with the European countries. In Europe, it's more comprehensive public health systems are actually seen. So if anybody is very much concerned about healthcare situations, then if, if you're looking about the other opportunity and if you find it's better than Europe, you can definitely go in for. Or if you're thinking that you would like to go and land up in a job in the United States of America, then taking up in the United States of America is a good option for you. Uh, the next is going to be diversity. Mostly, when we talk in case of United States of America and European uh, countries, both of them do have a very well-versed, uh, diverse research environments uh, in terms of research or in terms of many other facilities. But comparatively, United States of America is going to have more diversity in terms of international researchers. Yes, that's why you find a lot of people who are in the United States of America are from different parts of the country comparing when you when you're going to compare it with the European countries so it has more diversity whereas European uh, countries usually have a less diverse when we compare it with the United States of America the next important thing that comes for us is the work visa so work visa in case of USA if you're going to talk about obtaining a work visa not the student visa is a kind of difficult uh, in the United States of America but it becomes kind of easier uh, comparing with the United States of America in the Europe. Uh, but this difficulty might be varying depending upon the individual and which type of uh, a country or the city you're going to go in for. That's very important. When we talk in case of J1 visa, it's, uh, it's very easy enough if it's given by the university or by the uh, employer who's going to provide you. But when we talk in case of H1B visa, it's kind of difficult in the United States of America. So when we talk in case of Europe and the United States of America, uh, Work, getting a, obtaining a work visa in the United States of America is kind of difficult when we compare it with the European countries also. 
so if we have to talk or if we have to compare united states of america or is it you know uh, europe i would suggest it mainly depends upon uh, which uh, privileges you wanted to go for if someone is thinking of health care or if someone is thinking about uh, going in landing up in a job or if someone is thinking in for the work life balance uh, so this is mostly depending on uh, the priority that you wanted to take up suppose if one if one is considering the cost of living then the cost of living in the europe is kind of maximum than uh, in the united states of america in such scenarios uh, united states of america has a little more of less cost of living when you compare it there so taking up that is a good opportunity but if anybody wanted to take up a job then it's always good enough to go for us but if somebody else is looking for a good healthcare sectors uh, then europe is always a better one uh, obtaining a work visa might be variable if you want to go in for us or uh, if you wanted to go in for european countries so based on what is your priority accordingly you have to decide whether you want to go in for usa or whether you want to go in for europe because both the countries when we have to talk in case of both has an equal amount of advantages and both have equal amount of disadvantage so it's very very important the post doctoral position might be very very easy or it might be enjoyable according to the institution and in the project that you're going to work under so these are some of the factors which can actually make a changes uh, in the post doctoral position in the united states of america and the europe so it's not appropriate to say that europe is better and us is better but when we talk in case of most of the scenarios uh, us stands a bit ahead of the europe but europe also has its own advantage so based on your preferences you can actually choose uh, united states of america or europe i believe that this video is helpful for all of you thank you so much for joining i'm going to meet you back again with another video thank you all of you